Uh, welcome to Advantage Approach. We're going to talk about some resistor divider networks and how to use those, and then we can develop that into further electronic concepts. Um, so we're going to be using MicroCab. It's our simulation software. If you don't have it, I've included a link in the description below. It's free. And uh, was recently, the professional version was released as free. Used to only be able to put down so many components, but uh, now they, for some reason, they released all of the software. So uh, uh, Spectrum Software is, is the people who do it, so it's been really great to work with this. So we're going to start with um, some passive components. This is the panel. If you don't have the panel open on your version, it's in options. So you go to options, panel. Okay, there you go. So then first is the resistor. So uh, you get this dialog box that comes up with a lot of different options and information. Uh, most of it you can ignore depending on, on the specialty of your product or your particular simulation. So I'll basically touch on a few parameters each time. Um, hopefully that'll kind of expose you to uh, some of the newer information um, as you as you get along. But it starts with resistance, and you can decide to show that if you want. Um, you can show the value. We're going to choose a 100 ohm resistor, a uh, 100 ohm resistor, and then... Uh, there's other parameters here like cost, which is useful if you're creating a bill of materials. So basically it keeps track of how much your components are costing, and then you would give that to your manager or to your uh, boss or whomever and say, in order to do this electronic function, it's going to cost just 25 cents per board, stuff like that. So uh, unit cost is usually broken down by um, by like the price breakdown. So that means that if you're buying one of them, it's probably going to cost you two bucks or something. But if you're going to buy a thousand of them, then it's going to be about 20 cents. So keeping an eye or keeping, yeah, just like a kind of an understanding of of the scale of your production for this particular circuit. Um, we're going to be using ideal quality, so we're not actually going to be using a model. You can use models that make ideal resistances more real. They have more parasitic components like inductive elements and capacitors in them. And um, it, if you're if you have a very sensitive instrument that you're simulating, then you want to spend a lot of attention to the models that you're using. At this point, we don't really care, so we're just going to be doing this. All right, I'll create another one, 100 ohms. So the next thing is how we create our circuit. So uh, we're going to connect these together here, and then we're going to create a, uh, a voltage source. So it says battery, but this is actually the symbol for a cell. And the difference is that when you have a... Um, when you have a series of cells, that's what's called a battery. But just from the nomenclature perspective, this is actually a cell. Um, and you can put ground right here. This is the typical ground symbol that you would use. However, because we're, we're kind of on the earlier end of things, I just want to keep in mind that all circuits that you create have return loops. If you lose sight of that, you can create some problems in your designs later on. Um, and you can create EMC things that, you know, like if you have your circuit, it might be r irradiating some electromagnetic spectra, and that might influence, let's say, a pacemaker. So you don't want your circuits killing someone. So keep in mind that gr uh, your ground always has to have a loop to it. So a lot of times in designs, you'll see that people will do stuff like, like this. And they'll just have a bunch of ground symbols everywhere, and nobody really knows where they all return or the specific path they take to return. So that's really important um, to keep in mind. So we're going to call this node up here, we're going to call this in, and we're going to call this node right here out. So we're going to draw a line here, and this is going to be called out. And the nomenclature for this, like why didn't I call it V in or V out? Uh, there's no subscriptors or anything like that in this program, but when you do your analysis, it, there's a syntax that actually puts V of in and V of out, so that's why I do it that way. Let's go into the voltage source. So the value we'll choose is 5 volts, right here. And uh, we have a resistor divider. Now, we know that uh, if the resistances are the same, the output should be half of the input. Um, I'm not going to prove that for you here, but uh, or at least I'm not going to prove it symbolically. But I can go into analysis, and we're going to go into transient analysis. If you use this software a lot, I would recommend that you learn the shortcuts, because that can make things a lot faster. If you're just playing around with it, you go to transient. And so we get more complex things um, to interact with. Um, so maximum runtime is basically the, the, the length of your simulation, how, you, how long you want to simulate for. Um, this could be one second, this could be one millisecond, this could be one microsecond, or one nanosecond. It just depends on the scale, time scale, that you are 
looking at. And you can start a certain time into that. So you may decide that you want to um, uh, you want to simulate, and then the amount of uh, points. So how how deep your sample set is. If, if obviously if you have a lot of samples, it could potentially eat up your processor. So I don't think you want to do that. Uh, 51 is sufficient for what we're doing and then the results so if you're gonna graph you can choose to have different things on on the page um, so we're gonna put V of in here usually this populates for some reason but it didn't really do it today alright so we have that right and uh, then we're gonna set the X and Y ranges this is allows you to zoom up into the graph and um, uh, we're going to make this a function of time so it's gonna be time dependent uh, and we're going to put them on the same plot. So it's the page number one, and then we're going to hit run. So we have V in, that was our 5 volts, and then we have V out, which is our 2.5 volts. So indeed, this resistor divider divide by, divides by 2, and we can exit out of this. And one of the features of microcap, once you have done a transient simulation, is that you can look at the values on the schematic. They post it. So it's kind of nice. You can also check the current that goes through it. So... Uh, you can look at these voltage, but as soon as you make a change, as soon as you make a change, that goes away. So now it doesn't matter, uh, and you have to rerun the simulation. So just keep keep that in mind. If I wanted to put these on different plots, I would change this number to two, and that would make it so that when I run this, now I have two plots to be able to compare to. Just depends on how you want to do it and how you want to present the information. Um, if you're presenting for someone else, like your manager or his manager or wherever. Uh, you want to make sure that the data is very easy to understand and that you're able to tell your impressions on it and make your arguments very quickly. Uh, don't anticipate that they'll know what you're talking about. So uh, make sure that all of your data looks the way it should, and then you can um, get your way more often uh, if you're if you're in charge of the data. All right, so I could put it on two pages if I want. So here's page one. There's my input signal, 5 volts, and my output signal is 2.5. So those are just different ways of representing on the graph uh, what you want to do. If you wanted to change the X range, you could look at a particular portion of the graph, but since this is a linear response, voltage in, voltage out, with idealized components, uh, it's not going to change. Wherever I sample this or look at this particular graph, it's not going to change. If I want to extend the amount of time, let's say 10 micro, let's put this back on the same page and let's put them back on the same plot. We're going to run. Uh, did I, oh, I did, it, I did it wrong. Okay, they're on the same plot. Now they're on the same plot. There we go. Okay, so you can see maximum time, 10 microseconds is how, how long we ran the simulation for, and it's going to be constant forever. So that's how that's how you do basic resistor dividers, ideal resistor dividers, ideal voltage generators, and you have a ground. If you don't have this ground symbol, uh, it will not cooperate. So if you go to transient, it will say basically uh, you need a ground. So here's your ground, right there. And then you're good to go. Uh, and if you wanted to look at the currents, you could do something like this. You could put I of R1. You wouldn't do like I of in, because that doesn't necessarily, it, it might work, let's try. Does it work? No, it doesn't work. It shouldn't work. Yeah, it, it, it's not gonna cooperate with nodes. I was thinking it might be somewhat smart, but it's not. Anyway, the current in R1. That's not working either. Uh, I'll, oh, I didn't put a page. There, I'm going to put this on the second plot. There we go. Okay, the amount of current that goes through that is that. Just for... I just want to try this real quick. Ah, failed. Yeah, it's exactly what I thought would happen. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense anyway to do it that way, but I just wanted to see... Okay, so we have we have 24 mil now. If you wanted to change the current, because a lot of times in power applications you're you're trying to conserve all of your current or your power dissipation, uh, which I could view here if I wanted to. Um, oops, right there, the amount of power dissipation. So if I don't like those power dissipations, I could increase the value of the resistor to say a thousand, something like that, and then now it's an order of magnitude less as far as the amount of current draw. You can see that here, 2.5 milliamps which is nice, and the power is 6.25 milliwatts. So uh, you could do tricks like that if you're just trying to work with, um, if you just want a voltage divider and you don't really care much about what the current dissipation is, or the current draw on these resistors and the power dissipation is, um, then those are some techniques that you can use. Um, 
you can go 1k, that's another way of representing it, or 10k, we'll say with this one, and then we'll set this one to 10k. It follows, oops, not slash. It follows that. Transient analysis, run it. Okay, cool, let's check the current. Right there. Okay, 250 microamps of current, that's much better. A lot of customers, when you're working on products, will specify the amount of current that your controller or your design um, can dissipate because, after all, a lot of things are on cells. So if this were like a hearing aid battery, it wouldn't you wouldn't want your hearing aid to only work for a minute or five minutes or something like that. You want that hearing aid to work for 12 hours or 14 hours. Those are big selling and price points that sales that the sales team needs to use in order to be successful. So. Uh, that's kind of the basics of what I want to show today. Uh, I'll be posting about every other day, uh, maybe about once, maybe once a week at the start, and then every other day once I kind of get into a thing. So thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful. If you have any questions um, or comments, uh, put it in the uh, comment section below. And uh, if there's anything that you want me to cover or a model that you want me to work on um, and create a video from, let me know. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye.